Now I've got a quick video for you today. I want to take a look at uh, this antenna that I've got on the bench. It's the uh, Hawkeye uh, Tomahawk antenna because it's uh, shaped like a uh, Indian Tomahawk. Uh, it's a backfire antenna so it's a, a backfire design. It uh, apparently has uh, 12 dBi of gain. Now I've uh, built uh, backfire antennas on the uh, on this channel previously uh, a few years ago now but my backfires look nothing like this one here um, this one I've been wanting to get in uh, to take a look at ever since I made that video or just after I made that video um, and then I, I kind of forgot about it but uh, I came across this the other day because uh, they are difficult to get hold of now a lot of places don't stock this anymore Hobby King used to sell this but it's now been uh, discontinued and a lot of people never had very good things to say about this antenna people would uh, complain about the range of this antenna when leaving uh, a review and normally I don't take uh, you know much notice of reviews uh, without real test equipment um, a lot of antennas have a kind of a placebo effect you know if uh, somebody sticks uh, 16 dbi on an antenna and charges you a fortune for it the placebo effect kicks in and uh, you imagine that to be uh, an excellent antenna but uh, because uh, it's very hard to find a good honest review about this antenna i'm kind of uh, airing on the side of those people that have uh, had nothing but uh, bad things to say about this so before i take it apart and uh, see what the design is like in here and that's the uh, most interesting part that I want to take a look at that's why I bought this antenna let's take it over to the uh, network analyzer and uh, you know we can have a look at uh, the output on there and it might give us an indication as to why uh, you know people never had good things to say about this antenna now I've got the antenna set up on the bench uh, simple setup you see me do this many times but what's interesting is the output on the network analyzer now if we take a look at this you can see that I've got it centered on uh, the antenna center frequency but uh, if we look at uh, that frequency there it's centered at 5.4 gigahertz now that's no good for 5.8 gigahertz which is over here somewhere so maybe that is the reason why people had uh, a lot of bad things to say about this antenna if we move the cursor along and put it on 5.8 gigahertz we'll put it to uh, 5.45 that's the typical frequency used for uh, FPV video you can see it's all the way over here and this antenna is not going to be very good at all at uh, that frequency because it works best at around 5.4 gigahertz so pretty poor you know uh, not the uh, output I was expecting to find on the uh, network analyzer now it's got a wide operation of uh, frequency here I mean uh, it's not overly wide but uh, it's not bad at all it's just that if this area was over here at 5.8 gigahertz I don't think uh, people would have complained about this antenna too much uh, you know if uh, that was the case but uh, over here extremely poor now here's the antenna and uh, you can see it now that I've removed the uh, case off this and we'll go over the design first but um, my initial uh, thoughts on this was not so much the design but uh, what the design is printed on now if you take a look at this uh, PCB here this is not your standard FR4 PCB board this is uh, extremely expensive well a lot more expensive than uh, the cheaper boards you normally find these antennas printed on uh, the fiberglass type this is low loss PCB that is designed for these higher frequencies so it's just become a little bit more interesting and with it being off uh, center frequency like that it kind of it's kind of got me thinking that it may be due to uh, the uh, dielectric here the uh, PCB board that they've had this printed on now if we take a look at this this is a cheap uh, 
12 dB panel antenna for 5.8 gigahertz again both of these antennas are linear they are not circular polarized and this is uh, just printed on cheap uh, FR4 fiberglass board and uh, this one has uh, a pretty good center frequency but uh, if I were to take the measurements of this and print it onto this low loss board here um, exactly the same measurements that are on here I would put this up to the uh, network analyzer and it would be completely different it uh, the center frequency would shift and it would shift quite a lot because dielectrics play a major role on uh, the measurements uh, to get it uh, on center frequency for the frequency that uh, you want and uh, at the moment I'm looking at uh, producing a uh, panel antenna for the hydrogen line and I want to make several of these panel antennas and connect them all up together and I'm wanting to uh, make them on some neoprene tiles uh, that uh, connect together a little bit like a uh, jigsaw and the fact that I'm using the neoprene as a dielectric uh, to uh, mount the uh, copper plates on completely changes the uh, measurements that I need for uh, uh, 1420 megahertz and it's not just by a lot it's not just by a small amount it's by quite a lot you're talking um, you know reducing the measurements of those elements down by uh, something like um, 20 uh, to 25 millimeters on each side of the element and I think that this is what has happened here they've got a design the uh, backfire design and they've just gone ahead and printed it on this uh, expensive board which uh, you don't normally see by the way on these kind of antennas that you pick up uh, online and it's just completely knocked it for six um, the design uh, the measurements uh, for this don't go along with uh, this board and the board itself completely changes the center frequency of the design and it's one of the things I've tried to get across in the past I mean even to this day I still get people I still get a couple of comments a day where people are saying uh, you know these measurements aren't for 2.4 gigahertz you don't know what you're talking about you know especially on the cantenas a different design to buy quads so a little bit slightly different on the measurements there but this is a good example how something like the dielectric can affect the measurement of uh, the driven element and uh, knock its center frequency off whack and I mean I'm not 100% sure but I think that that is what uh, has happened to this design here they've gone for the expensive stuff the expensive board as a selling point probably and uh, you know gone for a design that uh, was designed to be printed on the cheaper PCB now as for the design uh, I do like it uh, it is a backfire it's just a different way of doing it we've got uh, the driven elements here and here and they're being fed through here they're the main driven elements and uh, we've got ground plane here that's connected over on the back here th through these uh, vias here and here that's ground plane this is all ground plane this um, bar that's going through the center if I hold it that way up whoops if I hold it that way up you can see it a little bit better that's uh, connected to ground plane as well so it's got like uh, similar kind of Yagi elements to this especially here and here they're just uh, parasitic elements they're not connected to anything they they would be uh, you know producing the signal to make it directional in uh, this way uh, rather than uh, making these dipoles here and here omnidirectional it'll be uh, squashing that uh, radiation pattern down so these aren't connected to anything they're purely parasitic these here and here they're ground plane as well it's just uh, this trace here going up here that is uh, signal and everything else is uh, ground plane so a really nice simple design and I'm probably betting if it wasn't printed on this uh, low loss board here it would have worked at uh, its intended frequency just fine but um, you know this is a design that we can uh, look at in a uh, future video and that's why I bought this antenna I uh, wanted to get an idea of what's going on 
under the hood as you will but uh, yeah i mean uh, i may be wrong about uh, the fr sorry the uh, board that's uh, the low loss board that it's printed on knocking it out of whack but um, i'm 90 percent sure that's uh, that is what has happened and uh, with it not operating at the correct frequency that's why it's got so many poor reviews i mean uh, if you look at the reviews online like 90 percent poor to uh, 10 percent uh, for this antenna and when you see a company like hobby king not not stocking this anymore because they're fed up with people leaving uh, negative reviews on their site and that's uh, you know probably what's happened here but this is certainly very expensive uh, expensive when you compare it to uh, this kind of board very expensive uh, board there so yeah that's probably what's happened so just a uh, quick video today then it was just uh, i was interested in this design just to see what's actually going on with this antenna but uh, if you do see this antenna um i wouldn't pick it up i mean it's not a cheap antenna i uh, paid uh, 24 pounds and free shipping for uh, this particular antenna i think it cost a lot more than that uh, back when it was first released before it got all its uh, bad reviews you can do better with uh, some of the other antennas that you can pick up for 10 15 pounds but uh, it's a nice example of where you know when it comes to antenna design it's just not a matter of uh, measuring something with a ruler uh, cutting it to that length and uh, then you know you've got yourself a working antenna when it comes to the measurements of the wavelength lots of other things that uh, you have to take into consideration and uh, some of these things can have a big impact on uh, your antenna so if you did enjoy the video please uh, give it a uh, thumbs up if you are one of the people who own this and uh, have given it a positive review then uh, please uh, let us know in the comments but as i said if you see this for sale i'd stay away from it